Okay. Well, welcome to the Co-Creator Sex Summit podcast, podcast series. We had a little, little break for Christmas and the New Year's, but we're starting up with this most amazing guest that you already heard about once, but we're going to completely jump from one end of the spectrum to the other end today. Um, because last time we talked to Belgie, we talked about sexual vampirism, but um, you know, in this whole creation of my book, I created this continuum from complete destructive, you know, disempowering sex, all the way up to blissfully connected sex. And so today we're taking a hop on the constructive, integrative, powerfully supporting uh, side of the spectrum and continuum. And we're gonna talk about co-creative sex. And um, just to put the context to why we're talking, uh, we're creating the Co-Creative Sex Summit. That's the 14th, 15th, and 16th of February, Valentine weekend. And we're really creating the ultimate Valentine weekend event. And we're just bringing out all the most amazing human beings, including Belgi, um, to be part of this event to really sort of blast this new awareness around what sex is, you know? and just blast people's awareness and, and allow people to integrate a whole new level of how they can interact with it and empower people's lives. So I'm super excited um, to talk to Belgique, who will also be our DJ as well that evening because we're doing this like wonderfully curated, chic, lovely book launch and, and panel and acro yoga performances and singers and just this whole creative shebang to just make this celebration around sex um, and the new, the new possibilities that we're really uh, all standing behind. So I'm excited here to introduce you to Baljeet, who was in a very important uh, person in my journey personally, and also in the catalyzing of this project of the book, of, of the book Sex Up Your Life, that started off as the 50 Shades of Connection, but at one point kind of was like, mm, this doesn't meet anymore. It's grown beyond the 50 shades and uh, really created this, this new impulse of sex up your life in the most mind blowing way that gets you the highest levels of your experience that is possible for you. So um, I know one of Baljeet's favorite topics or interesting topics that she would like to deal with is actually around, you know, when is sex empowering and when is sex not empowering? Um, so let's just jump in here. Belgi, is there something else you'd like to share about yourself before we jump into some of the questions that I might have forgotten? No, nope, all is good. <laughs> all right. um, so yeah, I'd love you to share with us. Um, I remember in our conversation when we first talked about co-creative sex and I was like, ooh, that, like, that <laughs> term just like, like landed like an explosion inside of me. I was like, yes, co-creation, sex. And I was coming back from a, like, you know, um, a teacher background where I would really co-create oftentimes this kind of impulse in my classroom of how I was teaching so it could become really alive. And I could really feel that when I was in my flow with things, some magic would always happen in the classroom that you couldn't even like foresee. And so we start mm -hmm. talking about co-creation in terms of sex. I was like, yes, there's some magic that happens in, in, in this meeting of two people. So could you share with us a little bit more about what is co-creative sex and what are the, the like, how do you get to that place of co-creation? Yeah, I, for me personally, I see co-creative sex as uh, using your sexual energy for the highest good. There's an intention behind it and you can have, um, whether it's solo or with someone else, you can have <clears throat> very subconscious uh, sex or very conscious sex. And the subconscious and what I talked about last time was that the energies would get stuck in the three lower chakras. So, you know, it get down to empowerment, to disempowerment, to fear, to insecurity. And when you're conscious having sex, then you bring that energy up and that's where you're able to co-create. You're actually able to co-create for the highest good. And that's, and of course, being unattached to the outcome. So if you're in a place of manifesting or really calling in abundance, whatever, it's really important to not be attached to a certain idea or person per se. It's really uh, co-creating for the highest good and allowing for the greater outcome to to arrive mm -hmm. so with a partner um, when you're engaging uh, 
whether it's just not even having sex, just really being with them. And the intention is really, uh, you know, bringing up that energy up to the heart center. You can actually co-create. And I've had stuff like where sales come through just magically. <laughs> um, and ideas or opportunities come through because you're in the place of taking personal responsibility being aware aware having self like just being self-empowered whereas if you're subconsciously co-creating with someone which you can like then it just drops into fear control manipulation and then you attract the not so great dynamics so mm. so that's really cool so you're basically sharing with us that when you actually tap into that, that, that really powerful intention of doing it for the highest good, it's like you're activating these powerful forces of creation with sex and yeah. this energy move through your body and you're bringing it to the heart center. And not only is it benefiting you, but suddenly it's like activating all these energies of co-creation and, 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 and positive things showing up in our, in our bigger lives. Yeah, yeah. It's, it really is being self-aware, um, showing up anywhere. And it's, it's how you're even showing up in your sexual energy as well. Um, as you know, I did years ago, a, a, a podcast, I was a guest speaker at uh, one of Davey Ward's interview and we set our intentions and we talked about co-creative sex. I think that's how you found out about it too. And, um, we had so much fun just through that interview because I knew her and I were just, we got it. We we're driving on that same level, co-creating and the same with you and I were just like, you know, everyone does it and they don't even realize that energy follows intent. So you can do the same with your sexual energy by using intentions with it on the highest right. level. So what I'm really going to like bring our attention to is like, it's, it's this kind of quality of creation it's showing up for this creation and you're with this other person. It's almost the equivalent of like jamming for music or, you know, you could come and have everything decided and you do yeah. it and you do this whole thing. But when you come with the spirit yeah. of jamming and you come with this really good intention, like we all experience a group of musicians coming together and something magical happens. They don't even practice before together. And this magical music comes out of that because they're oh. in that space. Yeah, and what you're saying about the fear as aspect, like let's just let's just put it in that that can, like that context of musicians, like they came in, they're all fearful, like what's that person gonna write? You know, what what music note are they gonna put? And and if they're kind of all at that kind of controlling place or whatever, it it the music is not gonna take totally. off. Totally. Totally. I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah, I'm so happy you talked about music. So you know, for those that are musicians, they can totally relate to that. Or people who have a lot of creative energy where they produce or whatever in the entertainment industry, it's your creative energy that you're working with. So if you're in this place of contraction and fear, you literally can't uh, co-create. And it's the same with playing music um, when you're just in the flow and you're just allowing whatever wants to come through. You're just being a conduit. That's where the magic happens. Right. Right. So that there's something about when you're being creative on your own and it's a bit safer too. You can just like, you know, jive with yourself and you might, <laughs> yeah. you might have the, you might have the energy coming through you anyways, but there's a special quality that comes with two people coming together or more. Yeah. Um, and, and, and like you say, like when we're in meeting another person, there might be other issues that come up. So there might be fear that comes up. Like, you know, I'm just thinking a musician, like, oh my God, that musician is so much better than me. Um, and then suddenly mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I can't be as much in my flow or, but that's the same thing for relationships and sex. Like, you know, whatever you put in the space of that co-creation is going to impact that relationship. Yeah, totally. I just had someone last week, I did like a group call and she was talking about how um, she kept getting uh, UTI infections or UTIs um, after having sex with her, her partner. And I was like, okay. And I was tuning into what that was all about. And I said, well, are you just having sex? Or are you having sex with intentions? Because I could see on his end, 
there was a lot of transference with his past that he hadn't dealt with. And it was just going inside of her. And she was like, not really. And she forgot about it. And she practices, you know, uh, conscious sex. And she realized that, you know, when you're with someone and the intention is different than the other person, that's where uh, contraction can happen. You can actually take on, there's a transference um, whether it's male or female, female or um, doesn't matter who the, the sex is, there's a transference there's in energy. Energy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, my, I, I just put my video. Oh. I turned my video off because it was a little bit choppy, and I just wanted to make sure everyone hears you really clearly. Okay. It okay. gets better. I'll put my photo back. <laughs> okay. okay. But um, yeah. Um, so yeah. So you said there's this transference that happens, and like she didn't even know that this was happening to her. Um, so, so what was missing in that situation? It more it has to do with the energetics. Okay. Now I hear myself echoing. So this is weird. Uh, it more has to do with the energetics of, you know, with, with the other guy too. And, and that's where communication is very important, um, with the co-creation aspect, because if there's transference and then she's always having to clear it. Uh, that's, that's a problem. So, <laughs> uh, there's definitely communication that needs to happen with the partner as well, with how they're showing up and how she's choosing to show up as well. Mm -hmm. So is the, is your, are you still getting echoes? No, not anymore. Okay. Perfect. perfect. Okay. Um, yeah. So it, like, it depends how she chooses to show up. So yeah. if you were, so what does that mean? Like that person, like, how do I choose to show up? What does that mean? You know? Yeah, for me, it's, it's more of like an intention. It's like, how do I want to show up for, for someone, um, whether it's in the bedroom or in the business, whatever. And so I actually, I actually intend on it. Like if I'm taking a shower, I'm like, okay, I choose to show up in my goddess energy. I choose to show up being empowered in my truth, grounded, uh, really embodied and really connected I usually ask that all interferences are removed between me and that other person so that we can really connect heart to heart, soul to soul, eye to eye. Mm -hmm. And whenever I do that, again, energy follows intent. Um, magic just happens because all that static gets removed. And because I've set that intention, I created that container for myself. I'm setting healthy boundaries within myself. So therefore the atmosphere, everything outside of me just reflects that mm -hmm. well I love what you just said because and basically I you that <laughs> it really allows you to we really see in that example how we're really becoming the creators of our life you yeah. know like for instance it's like co-creation but by setting your intentions creating like what the future you're going to be living into is you're actually creating your life or creating what's possible and when you say like basically it's going to be the, like better than even what I could have imagined you're like living into this thing that's going to be this creative experience that's beyond what even you can even imagine, right? Yeah, you're co-creating with the, the universe, you know, and if you, let's put it this way, if you're not setting intentions, someone else will set it for you. So if you're attached, either like in the bedroom with your partner for this fulfillment, and you're really projecting that onto that person, expecting everything to come from them, you'll end up creating an upset no matter what, because you're expecting that to come from them, then choosing to internally, you know, attend that with inside of yourself of how you want to show up. Yeah. It always reminds me of this tango lesson that I took when I was younger and I was, I was getting taught by this teacher and he was telling me like, I was just, I had learned that when you're a follower, you just want to respond really quickly to the guide of the other person but he was like, you are just like, have no resistance to me and, and, and you're just doing things, but there's no actual connection happening there, you know? And so I realized that, you know, like if the two people are not showing up with full presence, full participation and engagement, if one's just showing up and the other one doesn't, it's not going to work. It's like this kind of collaborative way of showing up together. And um, yeah, like, like you just said, if you kind of go in your default mode, it's like, something else comes and takes over. You're not taking that full responsibility. So when you, when you show up in that full responsibility, something completely different can emerge. Yeah, co-creation is big. Like using our sexual energy, um, you know, 
in a way where you become so present, it can be scary for some people because you're accessing a deeper level of intimacy within yourself. Um, and for many, it can be like super scary to meet on that level, to go that deep, to um, see those layers of themselves that they've never seen or uh, maybe different aspects of themselves that they never thought would reveal to them, maybe about their own sexuality and prefaces. Um, all that gets revealed um, with sexual energy. So if you're just doing the mundane thing and just Ever, just <laughs> not really consciously yeah can you am i there can you repeat that just that last sentence because i think you blocked out a little bit oh what did i just say i just channeled it <laughs> the two people sort of coming together and mm -hmm. oh it's just coming through me um ba -ba 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 -ba. oh yeah so if you're just doing the mundane thing um like when two people are coming together, then you're really not able to really, I totally lost that thought. I, it just, yeah. we're just like the mundane thing. You're just kind of in your default things. Whereas, oh, it's like, yeah. it's sort of what it can wake up all the yeah. things that it can wake not, up. And you're like, oh, yeah. like, I didn't realize this is going to come up to the surface. Yeah. You're not able to really access that deeper level of intimacy, but also the level of intimacy of your soul's growth, your soul's evolution. Um, and your soul's gifts. So if someone um, is very creative, for example, like let's just say there's a guy who's a musician and he's got such a gift and he's in a relationship where he doesn't get to express his gift. Like it's it's like a big no-no. What will start what to play out sexually, musically. musically. Okay. But what will happen in, sexually within that partnership, he may end up avoiding going really deep into his sexuality and exploring those sexual realms because on some level he knows and it could be subconsciously that if he was to access that depth of him it would trigger for him to look at his gifts and to finally like own that part of himself so he may have a belief system that if he was to access that he will lose the relationship so therefore sex gets played out in a different way it just gets played out in a very mundane way so why would he be scared to lose the relationship because he discovers a gift? Well, he may have a belief system that uh, in order for him to be a musician or be creative, it has to be solo. There, and it also base it's also on the relationship. If you know the partner yeah. um, is afraid of him being creative, I'm just using an example for people to really yeah, yeah. depth. It makes sense. And it's almost like what I'm yeah. hearing is like basically like they're something's waking up in them and they're like whoa like if I actually go into that deeper space it might mean I have to show up at a higher level and reveal yeah. myself to the world and be visible in the world in this new way or drop all these other things that I'm doing and like go for this and it's scary so I'd rather just stay safe and pretend that everything's yeah. working the way it is and stay at this kind of more shallow space yeah and what's going to happen in the relationship right like what's going to happen so if if on some level he's afraid of losing his partner as well, then, you know, he'll keep himself, he won't go deeper into sexuality. Um, another example is uh, you know, I dealt with a lot of uh, couples. Uh, let me know if, you, if my connection is unstable because I just got a note there. Um, where, you know, after they get married and have kids, you know, things just become just normal but then they lose that sexual attraction and everything just becomes very uh yeah a routine like and it's because they've reached a certain point where you know they actually are being called to grow um and there's an avoidance uh, and and uh what's going to happen you know what's going to happen to our kids what's going to happen to each other do we have to move and and it's scary for them you know um so there's so many levels as to why someone might be scared to access that when really it's it's not scary it's it's actually you know when you access the truth it creates the greatest freedom ever right that's a good point it in just to recap that like it's like you know there's this like oftentimes people think oh if there's a long-term relationship basically um 
like the sex dies at one point. But what you're saying is like, no, it's because like they hit this plateau and to actually get to higher levels of like keep their dynamic uh, life forces and, and sexual energy moving that they keep on being on that creative path. And they might like sort of like, we built all this, we want to now be safe and hold this and be scared to jump to the next place, which might mean all kinds of things, you know? And so, yeah, yeah so basically- your soul in general. Yeah, sorry, your, your soul in general just never stays like the same, right? So your sexual energy does the same thing. You're, you're, you're gonna go deeper in your growth. So that means sex will do the same. <laughs> Exactly. Like you're always like sex is activating your energy. It's accessing like who you are. That's maybe hasn't been revealed yet. And, and when you're really doing it consciously, you're actually calling in yourself yeah. into more becoming. And so this is the potential. And I like what I love you say, cause sometimes I'm like, yeah, blast you open. And like, who knows what's going to show up. You know? <laughs> yeah. What you're actually saying too, is like, this actually is the path to your greatest freedom. And it's actually really easy. If you just go in line with the like what you say, the truth of your soul, it's, it's actually the easiest path of non-resistance. You know, it's like, it's actually supporting you and becoming who you should become. Yeah. And obviously communication is such a major thing. Cause when you're going that deep, you need to have a solid container and just really communicate your boundaries as you access those different realms, because it's, you know, for someone, it's very important to make sure that that communication is clear, that you know that you're, you're allowing yourself to evolve because things can change. Um, and it's like, okay, well, what's going to happen as we up level? What's our agreement? Can you give me an example of that? Just so I understand a little bit better what you mean by creating that container that allows, like, what's the, what would be an example of an agreement? Well, let's just say uh, Jack the musician. Let's talk about <laughs> I just named him Jack. Um, let's say he's like, wow, I, I actually have to go on tour. Like, you know, what's going to happen? So, you know, he can have an agreement with us as a partner uh, to just sort of review, uh, you know, in that container, have an agreement when he travels to allow him to explore his creativity more, whatever it may be, right? But it's it's just making sure that they both feel uh, supported and held and feel safe at the same time. Because what I've seen in a lot of relationships that don't have agreements, that don't have, a, you know, healthy boundaries, a container, when people want to either step out of the relationship or, or explore their sexuality more, um, ancestral programming programming can come up and and when that get kicked up for some people they just may want to escape or break up and be like you're not my person and then they end up attracting someone else and repeating the same pattern so that agreement more has to do is when shit hits the fan what are we going to do you know we need to go in and and clear and look at these dynamics hi nathan <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I think Nathan, you're a little bit early. <laughs> he was like, I'm in. Let's let's talk about this. <laughs> hey, you wanted to come in the conversation, Nathan. We're I'm really so creating now. I'm Actually, sorry. You're, is it? You're you're in about an hour. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's not a problem. You're oh, the perfect oh. person to come in because we're gonna be talking about energy as well with you. So that's awesome. <laughs> right. I can I can check back for some reason. I had nine in the uh, on my calendar, so I'm happy to to come back in an hour. Okay. Awesome. Big hugs yeah. to you. You were just here to like you know you know promote your ne our next call. You know our next right. <laughs> There you go. There you go. I I so apologize. I don't. I guess with the the time change and everything, it just. Mm. Mess that one up. You know, you're in Aussie time and there's lots of burning happening over there. So that's great. Yes. That's all right. Yeah, right. Okay. I'll <laughs> let you two get back to it. <laughs> Bye. Uh, Maybe that's like, you know, the example of the musician, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I was like, you know, yeah. 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 Um, this is our so yeah, coming like, in as an example. Yeah. It was true. I was kidding. <laughs> yeah. So doing your shadow work, like really looking at your own stuff and, and going from there. That's what I mean about agreements. So, um, so just to come back to Jack the musician, because I think he's a good example. So let's say he's like, I have to go on tour now. Yeah. And, and then he's like, well, 
I want to be more creative. I want to maybe have other relationships on this trip. And Nancy, his partner, <laughs> um, is like, mm, I don't know if I feel comfortable with this. And so what happens there? Well, that's what I mean. Like if that wasn't part of the agreement in the container, right, then that boundary has been broken. You know, it's, it's like you pass the, the boundary or, or let's just say um, they create the agreement. And like you said, you know, all of a sudden uh, Jack, the musician realizes that he wants to explore him to see if that's that's what they want to do and and also why like I always find that there's a deeper reason with why someone is being guided to explore and there's no right or wrong with that it's like there's something inside of them that's it's wanting to access something deeper that may not necessarily be the medicine that Nancy may have maybe someone else has a medicine for it and it may just be that they they're attracted to someone but it doesn't mean that they have to have sex there's just this chemistry that 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 other person has it's the medicine that's provided um but usually like in our animalistic brain we're like oh we must have sex <laughs> you know what I mean? and it's like we don't yeah like it could be just like this real yeah. creative collaboration of like feeling that energy letting it nourish that those creative fields and energize them but not necessarily having this physical actual you know sex relationship with that person i mean in my past relationships like if any of that came up um you know i was grateful enough like my past partner really sat with the energy and and you know we talked about it but it just really and even myself i really sat in that energy and was like well what is it that with that other person is activating inside of me you know because it's true you're not just going to be attracted to like one person so what's the agreement around that? Like, what do you do? And when there's no agreements or container around that, then yeah, shit's going to hit the fan. Right, right. So it's basically having this agreement and, and seeing that the agreement has a sacred quality to it. And the agreement could be, yeah, we're both going to go and explore while you're on tour. Um, we're going to allow ourselves space. Or it's going to be like, no, we're really, you know, we're going to feel that those meetings, but we're not going to actually act on them. And, and, and if you can stick to, or if you need to renegotiate the, the agreements when things happen, then it's, it's always this piece around communication and being respectful of the boundaries that are there and come to a new agreement, whatever, it, whatever the situation is. And the more that you're clear on your boundaries, the more, yeah, it's not that you're, you're, not that you're avoiding to have the shit hit the fan, but you're like, you're honoring that energy that's allowed you to, to be experienced. You know, it's like, you're, you're allowed, you're not, you know, you're not attacking, but there's like a special relationship you have with someone and you're not respecting the agreements. You're kind of like, you know, you're hurting the relationship basically. Yeah. And, and I always find personally, like, you know, when, uh, there's not a clear clarity on what the container is with me and that other person, I'll, I'll end up creating upsets for myself because you just become attached to an idea of what this container is without communicating it. And you can't really decide what that is if it hasn't been communicated. So you really can't even break from that place. So the more clarity that you have, um, you know, and it's wrong, your soul is here to always evolve. And for some people, they're not meant to be in just a single partnership. Some people are meant to be in a different kind of partnership. Um, so it's really listening to your intuition, aligning to the values that really honor you. And, and if you choose to be in partnership, partnering with someone that has the same values. Yeah. And that's so how yeah, you're able to cope. Like everything, everything is possible whether your soul is to be with many different people or if your soul is to be in this specific kind of relationship, it's really about what your soul need is and honoring that, that container and finding that person that shares those values yeah. so that you're not hurting each other in that process. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. And um, so we talked about the different things that can get tripped up, you know, as that sexual energy comes through. And that's, that's a really interesting thing for people to really understand is that when that sexual energy is going to start circulating, that's when our programming comes up and that's when our issues and blockages come up. 
So what are the kind of things that you've seen that have come up um, that are like this invitation to take care of? Yeah, there's obviously your partner or whoever you choose to be intimate with, um, it can bring up stuff about your past, whether it's a past partner, like the same pattern, or more than likely a parent. Um, so that person can reflect back your mom or your dad. And, and sometimes you don't even understand it because it's so deep. It just triggers, like it's very ancestral. And you're like, oh, like, why do I feel weird all of a sudden or why do I feel drained or why do I feel triggered so it's always like okay well what's what's coming up with me you know what's what's clearing inside of me am I feeling a lack of self-worth and like where is this coming from it's, there's so many um examples like reasons why you know uh triggers can happen through sex mm -hmm. and but that mm -hmm. usually happens when you know you're your intentions, like you're just going in without intentions, you're subconsciously uh, co-creating with someone, um, where you're consciously co-creating with someone, that energy uh, goes to manifestation and co-creating and, and all other things. And then if you, if something does come up, you really see it as a deep healing. You're like, Ooh, I feel this something's being released right now, you know, uh, and you, you take care of yourself. You make sure you nourish yourself afterwards. Uh, uh, I, I remember uh, I don't know, a partner of mine said, you know, when, when things get poked, things get provoked. <laughs> that was so true. Like things get poked. So it's gonna, you know, there might be areas that hasn't been touched for a very long time. So, you know, it's very healing, like really understand where that's coming from. And it could be so deep. It could be so ancestral. Um, yeah. So that's the beauty of like, that's one of the examples of co-creative sex is that you're activating this energy between two people, things start coming up and it's this opportunity to take care of it and yeah. allow yourself that deepening of consciousness and evolution on your spiritual path. Yeah, And so that's where you're co-creating with the universe and with your partner and sex is like this kind of activator in the whole process. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. And then when you choose to not take personal responsibility, when your stuff does come up, then that's where, you know, like I said, shit hits the fan. So, so give us an example of that. Like, what would it look like when someone goes into their default mode? Like, you know, maybe a few examples that people can relate to. Um, let's just say, um, there's a couple, um, you know, let's, let's go into the rescuer victim pattern and there's two women, they've just had sex and one's more of a victim than the other one's like a rescuer. A victim is obviously someone who's unwilling to take personal responsibility for their own shift. And let's just say the rescuer is the person that always holds the light, always is the healer in the relationship. And they then, the responsibility. yeah, and let's just say after they've had sex, um, the victim gets super triggered, but then obviously she won't be able to, she won't take personal responsibility for her stuff. So what will happen is she might become very needy and project, you know, whether it's the mom and dad onto that, her partner in the relationship to fulfill her needs. And that can be very tricky because it can create codependency. Um, the other partner might get, you know, like this gross and just like back away even more and which makes the victim even more needy. <laughs> so that's just one example. Or she'll just feel resentful um, because she feels like her partner is not giving her enough when her partner has given her so much. Yeah. So that's just one example. Yeah, so that default, it goes into this unconsciousness and then it actually wedges like separation between the two of them instead of actually allowing them to feel more full and more whole and more like, you know, yeah. expressed. They become more and more like gripping onto each other or pushing each other away and it doesn't fulfill on their like the initial reason for them to be in a relationship. Yeah, it can, it can create a lot of push-pull and it can create like I've seen in some relationships where you know um, if someone's more in the victim position they'll end up reacting more because they can be like it turns into being passive aggressive 
having passive aggressive behaviors and then the, the rescuer partners trying to do everything and hold space and then it just doesn't you know doesn't really work <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's just like really starting to be aware of where we fall into our defaults. And I remember once you gave me this example of like someone, you know, that maybe things get tripped up in the relationship and it's and like one, you know, instead of like dealing with what's bothering them, they, they're like dissatisfied with the other person and the other person is, let's say the mom and she starts taking care more of the kids and the other one and the husband goes and watch more porn or, you know, there's all kinds of ways this can show us, you know? Yeah. 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 And so it kind yeah. of goes into this unconscious realm instead of being this creative, like enlivening process. It actually becomes yeah. like more and more dead. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to shift gears here a little bit with you. Um, mm -hmm. so you've been sort of watching me uh, create this co-creative sex summit and I'm so excited that you're going to be part of it. Can you share with our audience what you see the opportunity in, in this co-creative sex summit is? Yeah, I feel like whoever shows up is going to benefit a lot because all the speakers are, you know, from different backgrounds. What I really appreciate is the diversity um, and it, it totally matches with your message. Like there's so many realms of sexuality and to really understand the deeper aspect of healing through sexuality. Um, and so the speakers, they're all unique in their own way and you're just going to get so much out of it um and i admire everyone that's going to be there like i even i'm gonna i'm gonna be sitting in for each one for sure <laughs> um because it's there's there's so many layers so there's not going to just be one thing that's going to like one topic to focus on all weekends this is for all people all sexes and whatever like it's just it's, it's really a message to really look at your sexual energy and not be ashamed of it and really understand the deeper under like deeper aspect of sexuality and be like, huh, I never really thought about that. This makes so I'm much sense. Lovely, right? Yeah. And just experiencing this deeper level of freedom inside of you. It's, it's, it's really understanding your sexual energy on that level. It's not just about, um, the act of sex, it's really understanding your sexual energy and the healing component that's with it as well. It's, it's very profound. And our sexual energies, it's like our deepest level, I like to say to our spiritual, it's part of our spiritual, or it's part of our spirit, you know. Um, but we've been taught by society for so long to separate that energy. And so when we look at sex, it's like taboo. It's like, ooh, you know, and, and, society's made it that way as well so we're reprogramming our brain to be like oh yeah this is like our spirit like this is our birthright like we we own this this is a part of us so why not learn how to use it and also heal with it as well it's just so important yeah that's really beautifully put and I like endorse that 100 <laughs> percent um, is there anyone in particular you're like, hey, I want to go check out that workshop. It looks so interesting. Maybe work for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like a huge yeah. fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, how about for the evening, the sex up your life stories and just like you're going to be the DJ there. And yeah. what do you want to offer with your DJ music? Well, with the music, with the DJing, um, I'm actually, uh, I've just been uh, compiling a list of good, you know, sexy, sensual, fun songs that people can dance to, but also, um, even if it's solo or dancing with someone else, just to experience their own freedom and just be themselves, like just embody themselves. So the music that I'm, I'm choosing for the night is just like, we're just going to enjoy, have fun, really feel embodied and really feel connected to this deeper level of themselves. So it's going to be, it's going to be fun, fun and sexy. <laughs> and just to finish, I know that you've been one of my greatest champions through this whole writing of the book process. And you watched me from like the inception of it where we're like, you know what, I'm, like, I'm going to go like go to this workshop in England and do a workshop on writing short stories. And you're like, Julie, I think you're supposed to write a book. Yeah. <laughs> So like actually launching it um, and you've been one of those spiritual like, you know, mentors, just like 
like making sure I really, you know, you're like my spiritual doula that's like <laughs> really scary, but I'm gonna birth it into the world. And I'm just curious if you have anything to tell me about my book or like something you'd like people to know about my book. You know, um, for those that are watching this, like Julie, I've been watching her for, for years. I've known her since, you know, she was living in Quebec and the people that she's brought into her book. And again, I talk about diversity and how important it is, but the realms of, you know, the different stories and really understanding um, people's sexual discoveries about themselves, whether it's about their own sexuality um, and their their sexual preferences and how sex heal them, healed themselves and how they're still healing. It's, it's just so profound. And I feel like there's not enough stories out there that we've actually heard or allowed ourselves to be open to hear and, and the profoundness. So I, I really... Um, I'm excited about the book because it's like you can just, you know, have a glass of wine or coffee or tea and just sip it, read the book. But and that's what I'm going to do. Either one of them, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe both. But uh, yeah, it's 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 the the diversity of of what Julie's bringing into the book, and you know, I I get how it started off with fifty fifty shades of connections because there were so many. Uh, realms um, but now it makes sense to what you're calling it now awesome well thank you so much like honestly I have to be really grateful to you because you know without your backing I don't know if I would have actually done it but just like you're like so can we yep that's what you should do Julie and I'm like every time I found myself I'm like Val she told me that I have to be doing this <laughs> so I'm like okay go for it take more risks you know because there's so many risks involved and writing a book and getting this into the world and, and, and putting so much time and like, there's no funding for this. It's like, it's just, you have to do this. You know? Yeah. So having your voice behind me, knowing that you were endorsing me in this project was like so essential. And it's so in line with your whole business of allowing people to fulfill on their, their purpose. Um, just having you be like, yep, that that's what you should be doing. Go for it. And it's just like, okay, I can do this. And like, now it's actually happening. So I know that you've been essential in this process. And I recommend anyone that's a creator or that's, you know, wanting to fulfill themselves to have sessions with Aljeet because she really just looks into your soul and, and, and just like, yep, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> that's what you have to do. <laughs> Yeah, Even if it's a cool thing, it might not be exactly that format, but it's like it's tapping into like that, that where what's living inside of you and that needs to be expressed, you know? So yeah, I'm just so grateful that you came thank on my path. So. Thank you. And I'm so honored and thank you for sharing your gift. It really, it is a co-creation and like I'm, I'm just a, a conduit, right? So I'm just reflecting that what you already know deep down inside so it's it's again like your your willingness to to make it happen and that's the same with anybody it's like you can really access your creative gift by tapping into that part of yourself um, but it's also the the courage um that it takes for someone to do that because i can channel the god's green anchor to someone but they may not be ready to do it so um, mm -hmm. It really is a co-creative process, um, even working with someone. So thank you. Thanks. Well, that's great. I don't know if you want to have one last word before we, we, we sort of close up here. Um, definitely come out to the Co-Creative Sex Summit. Highly recommend. Um, and I'm really excited. I feel like this is just very different from the usual events that does, that does happen in Vancouver. And uh, yeah, let's let's celebrate the launch of the book and Julie and uh, and and just everyone else. Just really come out and have fun, have a good time. It was so interesting because like just this Monday, like it's it's of course there's we I've been I'm working with a team on this and everything like that. But it was really on Monday we had this meeting with all the people that are helping me promote the event, and I think there's maybe like 20 people now on board or 25 people and, and everyone was just like participating, like, you know, had the idea of what are they going to do to get this word out? And I was just like, you know, I've been working, waking up some mornings, like completely frozen because, you know, it's such a big financial investment and risk. And then I was like, Oh my God, how is this, how is this going to happen? Like, how are people going to see this, that it's actually happening, you know? 
Uh, and on Monday, I was like, wow, like it's not just living inside of me anymore. It's like this whole community that wants to see this co-creative sex summit happen. And it's like, it went beyond me. And I was just like, oh, like I really was like, I can go sleep now. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> There's this huge relief. So yeah, yeah. just, yeah. so thanks for saying that. Um, yeah. But yeah, so, you know, please come out and um, you can see the link in this bio or like the little commentary on, on uh, like what the description of this, of this podcast is there's a link. So you can go there or just go to co-creativesexsummit.com and see all these fabulous people that are participating, not only at the um, knowledge realm, but also the creators. Like we have these acro yoga performers that are amazing and these singers and this DJers, you know, they're just this creative. We, oh, I haven't told this enough yet, but we even have a sex exhibit where all these artists are like right now, like creating these pieces to be exhibited um, in this co It's called the sex, um, sex exhibit. And I just saw today that there was someone even using a blowtorch to make something today. I'm like, I just can't wait to see what these people are going to create. But it's this real <laughs> situation right now, you know? So that's really the spirit of this conference is like really it's tapping in. Yeah. So thank you for yeah. giving, you, giving me all the, the courage to do this. So <laughs> yes, love you lots. And I'll be talking to you soon. Yes. Bye. Okay. Big, big love to you. Bye-bye.